industrial robotics, collaborative robots are definitely the wave of the future. I'm with Bernardo Mendez, he's Senior Product Manager for Yaskawa Innovation. And Bernardo, I understand we're standing in front of a new model of collaborative robot. Tell That's me about right. it. So this is our first collaborative robot. This is the one robot that complies with all the four characteristics of a collaborative robot, which are power force limitation, uh, standard and emergency stops, program stops, and uh, hand guiding. Uh, the advantages of uh, this robot is that we designed it trying to empower the user, trying to empower the worker rather than substitute him. So it enhances the worker experience by helping him with uh, very repetitive tasks or tasks that were ergonomically challenged, like you know heavy weights or something like that. Because when you do that, you help the workers concentrate on more value add rather than doing menial tasks that can be done by a robot nowadays. Of course, uh, the other thing about the philosophy and what's a misunderstanding in the industry of collaborative robots is that you can just throw away the fence, right? We don't believe that. We believe there's always some, gonna be some sort of fencing, not necessarily physical, but really through sensors and other electromechanical safety features that allow the robot to interact safely with a human. So when people say throw away the fence, we don't, we don't say that. We, we're very safety minded and this robot uh, is an example of it. The best example of the safety is that it's got through arm utilities. That means the pneumatic hoses and the power cables are throughout the robot rather than the outside. That makes it safer and less prone to accidents or for the risk assessment purposes to have a positive impact on the risk assessment. So this robot overall, because it's an nascent technology, we're trying to show people its capabilities and the possibilities of these deployments. And that in a nutshell is what we're doing. Uh, which industries do you anticipate would best benefit from this collaborative technology? Based on the research we've done, and I've done a lot of industrial research, I've gone to visit customers, a lot of machine tending applications like CNC's and other machines that require, you know, a human placing the part in a different part of the motor uh, of the machine, so it does a process and then has to pull it back or put it somewhere. That type of application. So it's kind of like a pick and place about mach or machine tending. So in terms of, of the rate at which technology like this begins to advance through the, the shop floor, it will begin with repetitive task or the dangerous task first? I believe so. Uh, it'll start with repetitive, simple repetitive task, but as the user be becomes more and more empowered and, then ha and he realizes the enhancements that he can get, he'll you know evolve and become more sophisticated and realize that you know, this machine is very versatile. We designed it that way. So you can start having integration with other production components like conveyor belts, IOs, uh, run routines in the background that allow you to make it a more complex, richer application. And uh, speaking of which, uh, uh, the interface, uh, uh, teach pendant, uh, how is yeah. the program? Uh, the t at the beginning, when we launch it, the teaching program is going to be the same as you would uh, do with any industrial robot with the other layer of PFL, the power force limitation. But if you're you know, well versed on an informed program or informed programming language or a ladder structured language, it should be very easy. We've also added a few features where you can hand guide the robot and only use three buttons that appear on the touch screen. And that's all you need to hand guide the robot and teach him what you want it to do. And the advantage of that is it, in, it uh, allows, it empowers the user that doesn't have a lot of knowledge of programming to see how the code gets generated as he moves the robot and makes it do the, the actions that he expects. So all that code gets generated only from hand guiding the robot. That way the user starts becoming familiar with what the process is to create those programs. And eventually we're, we are gonna come out with a very easy to use pendant that is gonna be more graphically interactive. And that's for the people that really, really wanna program the robot in a way that is not simplistic but it's easier to use. Now in this case example, looking at a simple two-jaw gripper, uh, uh, it's practical with other kinds of end effector? Yeah, uh, so Yaskawa is not going to make the end effectors. We have worked with uh, Robotique, which is a great partner, with Simmer and other European manufacturers of end of arm tooling. Uh, so we, all of them have been very cooperative and working a lot with us. So we're going to have a lot of options for the HC10. Well, you know, if the, pretty much the sky is the limit because a lot of people have approached us wanting to do end of arm tooling and other ancillaries for the robot. In the future, will all robots be collaborative? I don't know. And, and the quick answer to that is 
what's the driver of automating something? If the main driver is uh, having a higher production speed, a higher production cycle time, then the answer is no, uh, because the, ro the collaborative robot's always going to be slower. Why? Because it's considering the forces and the mass to not harm a human. That means inherently it's going to be slower. But that means you can grab a GP8 or a GP12 and put some light curtains on it and make it collaborative that way. But the main objective there is to make sure that the human is always protected. Pascal's new collaborative robot, HC10, Bernardo Mendez.